Sheila, let's first of all start off with a kind of United angle here. How will these new aircraft be rolled in to the fleet? What impact will they have in terms of economics? Sure, Guy. Um, so, you know, 200 seems like a huge number from, from United, and but it's somewhat warranted. You know, we, when we look at United's fleet, it's about 15.8 years old. The average U.S. domestic fleet is about 10 years old. So it's no wonder they're going to refresh their fleet. Their analyst day tomorrow, we think they're going to focus on one international to you know fleet dynamics and renewing it and a focus on esg of course if you have newer aircraft if you swap up your 757 767s for maxes and a320s it's going to create a more fuel efficient fleet more environmentally friendly so it's no surprise that they're doing this given the age of their fleet uh, but let's put it into context what we're seeing in the us um in the domestic market for narrow bodies is the fleet is going to expand overall for all the carriers, both legacy and low cost carriers, about 4% from now, from 2020 to 2023. Of that, it's actually the low cost carriers that are currently getting an infusion of capital. Um, they're expanding their fleet 50%. So the legacy carriers like Delta, United, yep. American are only growing their fleet in line with traffic at about a 4% rate. The thing that really stands out to me in this order book, this potential order book, is, is the 321 XLRs. Uh, these are the aircraft that, that JetBlue are going to be using to fly across the Atlantic. We're looking forward to that first flight taking place in August. Um, Boeing, this, uh, they're, they're going, they, what they're looking like they're going for is a single fleet. Uh, they're going with a lot of maxes, which means that you can have commonality across a wide range of things. But they need these XLRs because Boeing doesn't have anything else that can compete. How big a problem is that for Dave Calhoun? Would this be an all Boeing order? If Dave Calhoun over at Boeing had something that could compete, can compete with the XLR? Perhaps, um, but United has a very mixed fleet. They have both Airbus and uh, Boeing aircraft, whereas JetBlue is obviously an all Airbus fleet. So, you know, it's somewhat of a not, su not surprising that, you know, United is not going for commonality, just given the size of their fleet is fairly large and they already don't have it. Um, one thing that takes people by surprise is the XLR is actually only 5% of the backlog uh, of the A320. It's quite surprising given how much news flow and it gets. But what it does help is commonality for other airlines. They match up their A320 NEOs with the XLR um, for specific routes. The XLR is only for transatlantic, for specific route structures. You wouldn't use it, you know, JFK to Boston, for instance. Hey, Sheila. In terms of, it's Alex in New York, in terms of why they're buying, I know you mentioned that they're going to have to replace some of their fleet. Is it replacement? Is it adding new planes because they're getting more business? And how, or how much of it is sort of ESG focused, environmentally focused, where they need a new type of plane uh, to help their emissions? So it's mainly a replacement demand. When we look at United's fleet, it's narrow body fleet. It has about 460 aircraft. Um, you know, we think about 250 of those should be retired in the near term. So it's no wonder the aircraft order amount is 200. So it, it is purely replacement. And of course, with that, it, it goes along with the ESG angle. You know, the, the NEOs and the MAXs are going to be 15% more fuel efficient uh, than the prior generation aircraft. So it, it's a bit of both, Alex. Sheila, can I, can I just come back to the issue of the XLR? Because one of the big questions that everybody's asking of Boeing is, are they going to build a new aeroplane to compete with it? Are they? Should they? Is that a good idea? Is this kind of order a wake up call that maybe Dave Calhoun does need to make something that competes with this aircraft? I think that's a great question, Guy, and it could take a long time to, to discuss in this segment. We, we recently conducted a, a survey of airline CEOs and executives about what Boeing should do and to our surprise, the airline CEOs were not giving us a wish list. Um, we did this note two years ago as well uh, of what they want in their next aircraft. In fact, they're kind of taking the view of, you know, it might be better to wait. If you come out with an aircraft today, it'll probably be launched in 2030 or enter service in 2030. That gives you maybe a 10 year time for 10 year run on the aircraft. Why not wait till 2040 and until the engine technology is truly there? Um, and have a third year run like you're meant to. So, uh, it, it, you know, Dave Calhoun is in a tough position. It doesn't necessarily make financial sense to come out with a new aircraft to chase after 5% of the backlog yeah. that the XLR has. 
But then again, you've had some issues with your recent aircraft, like the Max, the 87, and the 777X. So do you come out with a clean sheet? So he's been between in a rock and a hard place right now. Does it accelerate Boeing's decision to build an all new narrow body? Um, I, I think the decision to build an all new narrow body means you need the technology to warrant the 10 to $15 right. billion dollar investment. And I, I'm not sure the technology is quite there yet. So if you were to launch something today, would it be considered an interim aircraft, which is kind of a temporary fix from 2030 to 2040 until you know, the technology is truly there, whether it's hydrogen, composite wings, composite fuselage, um, and you just have a much more engine efficient, uh, efficient engine. Um, but question, Sheila, just on United for, uh, for tomorrow. Um, the strategy meeting in 2018 did not please investors and analysts. What are you going to be watching tomorrow? You know, I think three things perhaps. One is, what are they thinking on international? They've been one of the more bullish airlines. Um, domestic in the U.S. is maybe 20% 2019 levels. So the narrow body, uh, the, the domestic market has already recovered. It's what are we going to see on international? It's the next slide of the recovery. Unfortunately for United, they are more exposed to Asia versus the versus the other legacy carriers in the U.S. So they are, you know, a bit behind. So what, what are they seeing on international? Second is, you know, cost. Cost is so big for the airlines right now. Um, just given that they've taken a lot of cost out, but is the structural cost that has been taken out or variable cost that's going to come right back? Especially with fuel prices back to, you know, essentially peak levels, with demand still 40% below that. So um, salaries, what are they going to see there? So a focus on cost and what their new cost structure looks like, say, in 2023. And then third, um, ESG is a big focus for all the airlines and the space in mm -hmm. general. And United, of course, has been a lead there with their commitment on Boom Supersonic. So I, you know, I, I think they'll focus on that. So three items is, is what I'm looking to hear.